Hello, Namaskar, 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 Namaskar. My name is Pooja Devedi. Today could be the day when India will go down in history as the first ever country to soft land on the south pole of the moon successfully. Now, there is a term to describe the landing of the Chandrayaan 3 that echoes the pain of the Chandrayaan 2 as well, the 15 minutes of terror. On what parameters the Chandrayaan 3 has to go by so that it can launch itself, it can land itself successfully? We will discuss all this in detail. You have to ensure that you be a part of my Telegram channel to get the PDFs of whatever I teach here. Puja Devedi UPSC is the name of it. If you have to talk to me about UPSC, you can also be a part of my Instagram channel. So in July 2019, India aborted the first ever attempt to soft land on the moon through Chandrayaan 2 because ISRO chief K. Sivan said that it is actually a 15 minutes of terror. Just few minutes of its before its soft landing, it lost contact with ISRO and it spun at a degree which was not prescribed to it. But Chandrayaan 3 has learned from the failures of it. Partial success, we can call it, because the orbiter is still working. We are going to talk about that. So, September 2nd, 2019, Vikram lander separated from the orbiter successfully. Then a deorbiting maneuver was performed in which the orbit was reduced, reduced to this much. Then Vikram landing was attempted on September 7 and around 2 km above the surface, it lost contact with the ground station. Because the parameters it had to follow, proper distance as well as at a proper place where it had to be, it wasn't there. And then because of the contact was lost, because the contact was lost, so the ground station could not intervene much and hence it crash landed. And variable thrust propulsion technology is being used in the lander, uh, was being used in the lander. The current thruster has also been changed. There are four phases when it comes to the proper landing. Phase one is known as the power descent or rough braking phase. Here what will happen currently, the Chandrayaan is moving at a great speed when it comes to the position it is being horizontal. To land, it needs to be vertical, right? So during this phase only, simultaneously, when it is traveling or moving forward closer to the moon's surface, it will also turn itself in such a manner that it starts becoming vertical. Then only on its stands, it can descend down and land successfully. All right, so first phase, phase is the rough breaking phase. This is the other critical part of the landing in the process. It will take place simultaneously while it is moving and at the same time it is moving vertically but not fully. It is just a beginning. It will reduce the lander's horizontal velocity from a range of 1.68 km per second at a height of 30 km from the lunar surface. Here it is at a height of 30 km from the lunar surface. The horizontal velocity, the speed at which it is moving horizontally will be reduced. All right. Also, it will be almost zero for a soft landing at the designated site. It has to be so. About 70 degrees from the south, about 70 degrees south latitude of the moon. So, first is this particular phase. All right. Then we have the second, which is the altitude hold phase. Here, this particular Chandrayaan's lander, it will hold itself for about 10 seconds using certain sensors it will ensure if it is going in the correct way or not. So sensors are there. It is just like driving a vehicle. If you go to certain new places, first you check the surrounding, the area, the map and then you move forward. It is not like you just keep on moving, keep on moving. It doesn't care if there is certain sort of obstacle that is in front of you or any sort of boulder, you don't care. It's not like that, right? Similarly, it is for Chandrayaan 3's lander. So when it will hover, it will hold itself for about 10 seconds, it will through its sensor, collect information about the landing. All right. Then Chandrayaan 3 at this particular point of time, that is 5.47 p.m. today itself, it will ensure that it touches down by 6.4 or at we can call it 6.4 p.m. So it is tilted almost at 90 degree. To land, it needs to be vertical. Okay. This process of turning the lander, uh, it is very calculative as in there is a lot of calculation that has to be done mathematically 
and this was the time this was the issue that arose when it comes to chandrayaan 2 the vertical movement couldn't take place properly we have done a lot of simulations this is said by the isro this is where we had a problem the last time when it comes to chandrayaan 2 see it is also to be ensured that we have to reach the landing position right so during this process a lot of fuel is consumed and during this procedure a lot of fuel is consumed we have to ensure that we have enough fuel in order to reach the particular site otherwise it won't be able to do so so a lot of calculation a lot of algorithms have to be ensured the distance calculation to be is to be correct and all the algorithms are working properly then the speed and direction of the lander will be taken care of by the 12 onboard engines there are 12 onboard engines the lander's four engines are used to reduce the velocity there are also eight small engines to control the direction of the descent because direction has to be precisely where we want to land because the uh, uh, the moon surface is full of craters and boulders it should be a smooth surface so that our rover can move forward then the it is throttable and the thrust can be varied the engines it can keep the lander hovering on the moon's gravity this is uh, this is the purpose of the engines that are being used now the horizontal velocity that is the speed at which this particular chandrayaan 3's lander is moving in a direction of this much 1.68 km per second at the beginning of the landing process has to be first reduced to 358 meter per second and this should be the exact amount also uh, then it will be 61.61 meter per second vertical velocity in the ideal rough breaking phase rough uh, rough breaking phase is the one which i talked about the first one okay so we are still going into that and at a height of 7.42 km from the surface the altitude hold phase will occur this will be 7.42 km from the lunar surface during which it will tilt from horizontal to vertical position it is the time when it will tilt properly all right and at the same time it will also cover distance because it has to keep on moving forward so a distance of 3.48 kilometers will also be covered the altitude will be reduced see so many things have to be taken care of we have to take care of it being vertical at the same time it is traveling at a proper speed and it is covering a proper distance so much calculation has to be taken care of and salute to all the scientists of isro specifically for this also the velocity should be 336 meter per second and 59 meter per second horizontal should be this much and vertical should be this much so this matching of different speeds is very important the third phase is the fine breaking phase in the fine breaking phase only the chandrayaan 2's lander could not properly vertical itself and that is the problem it happens around 175 seconds it happens for around 175 seconds here the fine breaking phase when you see that it is completely becoming vertical in nature you know what long process this is also the lander will move fully into a vertical position during this period of time it will traverse the final 28.52 kilometers to the landing site altitude will at the same time come down to 800 to 1000 meter nominal speed should be 0 meter per second a little bit of velocity is also important you have to understand that from 30 kilometer to 7.42 kilometer will be the rough breaking which we have already covered when its descent starts to take place it starts moving from horizontal to vertical not too much not too little at 7.42 km there will be an altitude hold phase for 10 seconds around instruments will carry out the calculation in this phase and a verification at 800 or 1300 meters above it will do a verification with the sensors at 150 meters it will do a hazard verification if it will see that there is any sort of boulder or crater that it might land into it will see if it is if it is okay or not to land here if not then it can move forward up to 150 kilo, uh, 150 meters sorry 150 meters it will move forward this is the extent of it so you see it has been made with so many sensors so many hazard detection system engines thrusters that everything has to be in a line everything has to be coordinated in order to make a proper soft landing 
Chandrayaan 2 and Chandrayaan 3, there are certain differences with respect to the technicalities. It used a first order automated guidance system that it could move automatically. Chandrayaan 3 uses a better second order guidance system. Then Chandrayaan 3, an instantaneous thrust regulation is also used in the rough breaking phase. In the first phase itself, proper thrust regulation will be used. That means thrust is the force that any object uses to push itself down or push itself not down in any direction. The thrust should be proper. Also in Chandrayaan 3, the thrust demand is higher as compared to Chandrayaan 2. So thrust and angle continuity are the two things that we have to keep in mind. Also, extensive simulations have been done. Guidance system have, has been changed. Even if there are variation in the nominal numbers, still the lander will make an attempt to land vertically. Given that, even if all the sensors fail, if propulsion system works well, it can land successfully. Even if two of the engines do not work because it has been designed to be so. The parameters have been fed in certain manner. Now, touchdown should be done at a maximum speed of 3 meter per second, which is 10.8 km per hour. Optimal speed is around 2 meter per second. This is the period, this is the parameter at which the sensors which the lander is carrying will not be damaged. The lander can also have a tilt of up to 12 degrees and still land safely. It requires a lot of fuel because in order to set itself for these many parameters, it has to still hover with the help of fuel. Velocity to touch down and this has, and this has been identified as 1 meter per second. Alright, so if you understood this topic well, be sure that you subscribe to this channel. Also share among your friends who are preparing for this examination or even if they are not, it is very informative in nature. If you want to prepare for UPSC, you can be a part of P2I batch 2024. We have three batches, Hindi, English and English. Classes have begun from today itself at 6 p.m. onwards. Be a part of this batch. You will get all things at once. Prelims, test series, main test series, daily answer writing practice. It is all available at just Rs. 70,000 but if you use the code PDLIVE it will be made available at 29,999 only. Make sure you be a part of this particular batch. Thank you so much.